Okay, welcome to part 8 where we're going to play Drop Zone. Now, Drop Zone is actually one of the few European exclusive games from what I've read. Um, I have this on the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, funny enough. They're pretty much the same game, just one has color and the other one doesn't. I'm pretty sure the music is higher pitched than it's supposed to be, but it's not really a big deal because you only get to hear the music on the title screen anyway. Yeah, boy, you're a calm and some called Archie McLean. Now as you will see, yes, look familiar. If it it should, because it's basically just well, it's basically Defender. Except it's harder because it goes a lot faster, at least from what I remember of the arcade version. Yeah, I'm pretty terrible at this game, I will admit. I'm a fair bit better at the real Defender. Oh no, this game just seems to be a bit too fast and Consider this is the speed it would actually play as. I mean, and this is the real speed they would play on a pal there, so I'm pretty sure of it. Geo, you know, this, is, this is our pal fam clone, so it's not the clone itself that's being fast, it's the game. Just, you know, and it's, it's just as bad on the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Like, I, still, like on, I can't get anywhere in any of them. Okay, ooh. Okay, I touched an invisible bullet, wonderful. That was enlightening. Uh, game number 32 is Dash Galaxy. Apparently by Data East, although I'm pretty sure it's by... Well, it's obviously like Beep Software. I mean, you can tell by the audiovisual style. And it has a very... B-movie flair to it. At least in terms of uh, what it's supposed to be. So yeah, the game starts with this sort of Sokoban style puzzle thing. You push boxes around. And it's really easy. It's easier than real Sokoban. Not so that much. But it's not really the main part of the game anyway, so that it does kind of make sense. Yeah, you have these platform parts, which a lot of people will say are pretty bad. I kind of agree with them to some extent, but... To me, this game kind of reminds me of Robocop on the Game Boy. It's a, like, it's an average game, but the music's awesome. Probably to a lesser extent in this game. But still. And it's surprising because um, Beam Software games aren't really known for uh, having good soundtracks. At least not on the Nintendo. I mean, like the Back to the Future game, the last part, the music's just an annoying drone that plays you about 90% of the game. Oh, three seconds to detonation. Bang. Okay, apparently I killed myself. Oh, I see, it's like Spelunky, you have to be off the screen when it explodes. Yeah, I see. Actually, I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do there, so uh, let's move on. Game number 33 is... Hey, it's Cubert! I didn't even know this got released on the NES. Ah, Cubert, arcade classic. By, uh, Konami. Uh, okay. This control okay? Well, it's not going to control okay, well, no, no matter what I set the controls to, so might as well have them default. And yeah, I've got to say it to, uh, I didn't bother reading it, is it right is down, down left? Yeah, it is. I know what I do in Cubit. Mind you, the best part of Cubit is when you lose. What the fuck? <laughs> That's always hilarious. Uh, no, I don't want to get hit by the ball. Yeah, I'm terrible at Cubit, I will admit. But it's just funny seeing him die. That's, that's like the best part of this game. It's like Cubert dish. Okay. Hey, level complete. Wonderful. Yay, I won. Okay. Uh, might as well do another round. I wonder if this version ever ends. Because I know with, um, with. I know with the NES version of Gyrus, the game eventually ends. Even though I'm pretty sure the original arcade version didn't. Oh, bugger. Yeah. But yeah, I'm terrible at this game, so let's move on. Game number 34 is Egypt. And Egypt is a puzzle game by human. Human creative. Well, it's got to be created by a human. Unless it's an action 52 game, in which case could just be generated by random numbers. But it is Egypt. And this is actually a very good game. It's a puzzle game. As I will attempt to demonstrate, it's like an it's like an Indiana Jones theme puzzle game. Let's go with free play. Okay, level one. 
Wonderful. Uh, okay, what's going on? I haven't actually tried the free play room before. Oh, I see, you have to press the A button twice for some reason. That's why it wouldn't let me move on. Okay. Yay! Level 1 complete. Let's see if we can get something more taxing. Because that was kind of easy. I don't get that though. Step 17, rotate 17. Okay, uh, how do you change the room? Oh, okay. Let's pick, let's pick the last one, see if it's at least somewhat difficult. Yeah, I'll get this. Yeah, this seems easy. Simple. But yeah, it's a puzzle game. It's actually a pretty good one. Um, in fact, I would actually get a copy of this game if I find it. It's a, it, it's a, it's a game I could see myself trying to play through. But, next game. Game number 35 is Alpha Mission. This is another shoot em up. Which hopefully won't have glitchy graphics. So yeah. Oh, oh right, that uh, the game in the last part where the graphics were screwed up. Yeah, Alpha Mission, um, an early shooter game by SNK. From I mean, this was before they even did uh, Ikai Warriors, I think. Oh no, you're not killing me! Oh, bugger, Mr. E. I don't want to miss the E, and I don't want to miss a thing, except the E, except the backwards E, because backwards E is evil. They're evil, because they are backwards, and backwards that is a going to kill me. Yeah, I'm terrible at this game, so let's move on to game number 36. Oh yeah, now I should point out that the next three games are absolutely god awful. Yes. These are sort of Fisher Price. I'm gonna to try to cover them all in this in this part. And yeah, one channel music. Wonderful. Yeah, Fish Price percent Firehouse Rescue. So yeah, they're supposed to be I mean these next few games are supposed to be sort of educational games, but then Well, they're awful. <laughs> but they again would expect from an entertainment game. I mean the only good one. I mean, the only good one I can remember playing was uh, Oregon Trail, or however you pronounce it. Oh no, I'm not American. But yeah, you drive around this maze, and every now and then you go to a house. Okay, that's not even a house, that's a tree. You think that's a house? You don't know what a house is. Go okay, try to start your second rescue level one. You know what? No, I'm not going to bother. Uh, I can remember. What can you remember? Oh, I can remember how terrible this game is. Yes. Another fish prize game. Somewhat better music because it uses more than one channel. But that's not saying much. Fish prize presents one four. Let me start. This is time wasting rubbish. Oh, I can remember. Can you really? Ah, skipped it. Gameplay. Uh, menu screen that looks oddly similar to Mega Man 2. Oh no. That doesn't make the game good though. Let's play alone. Yes, my name is made up of letter A. Repeated four times. Level 1. I what am I doing? Is this... Well, it's obviously just going to be one of those stupid matchup games. Wonderful. You know what? <laughs> you know what that game is. It's just, you just match up the cards. Yeah, most pointless game ever. Hell, Noise Code even did a better version. And that's saying something. Yep. Another game. I forgot what it was called. I think it was Perfect Fit or something. But yeah, once again, terrible game. But then again, what else would you expect? Actually, we might be able to cover one more game in this part. Game number 39. Or something. So yeah, perfect fit. Ugh. It doesn't let you skip this stupid intro sequence. 
Like, like I actually want to watch it. Like, what's the point? But yeah, instruction. Yeah, I don't care instructions. Uh, who should I be? Hello, hello, Lou. Best name ever. After every other name ever. Press B to continue. Okay, letter G. Oh wow, I know what a letter G looks like. This is the hardest game I've ever played. Oh wait, oh wait, the other 37 games are harder than this. I love the fact that they actually call it a puzzle. Yeah, because it's really a puzzle to figure out what is shaped like a cake. Or whatever that is. Yay, it's a perfect fit. That's just rubbish. Uh, like seriously, who's going to play that for more than 20 seconds? Oh yeah, no one. Uh, well, got some time left. Might as well cover one more game. Helcaterno Ken. Yes, made by... Toei Animation and the Shoei system. Off a down. Now I'm kidding. This game I've played before. It's this is actually on the 52 and one multi cart by Supervision. I don't own the cart, although I have played a ROM of it. Now this game is just a really awful beat 'em up. You might notice a lot of the fast food games have been pretty awful. It should get better later on. At least I hope so. But yeah, the game. Well, I should say this isn't even up to Kung Fu in terms of stands, and that came out a couple of years before this. Basically, it's, well, it's supposed to be based off Pokémon no Ken, or Fist Enough Star, whatever it's called, whatever you want to call it. Oh yeah, punching these pink ones give you power-ups or something, in the form of Japanese text. It doesn't make much sense, but whatever. Yes, you punch people and they explode. Probably the most violent game on the Nintendo, to be honest with you. Which is funny. Oh wait, no it isn't. I'm looking mad because the game's awful anyway. Like, I try to kick this fat bloke. About 99% of the time I lose. Okay, and now he's not taking any damage. Oh wait, no. Hey, actually won. Nice. Normally I end up getting completely pwned by him, but... Uh, the game doesn't get any better, trust me. Uh, scene 2, more the same, except it's harder to actually find the ending, because the levels are essentially mazes, I should point out. So trying to find the end of the level is a pain, but yeah. I will see you in part 9, see you later.